Thanks for joining us on the newsroom. I am Aneta Felix. The National Association of Resident Doctors of Nigeria on Monday commenced a nationwide strike after the expiration of a 14-day ultimatum. In a circular last week, National President of NAD, Dr. Aliyu Sokomba, had said the association found it necessary to take the painful decision following the inability of the federal government to meet its demand. All resident doctors, medical officers below the rank of principal medical officer and house officer officers across the federal and state hospitals in Nigeria embarked on the total and indefinite strike action from 12 midnight on Monday, June 15, 2020. Sokomba clarified that the doctors are striking for the government to provide appropriate personal protective equipment for all healthcare workers for them to immediately reverse the disengagement of all 26 resident doctors in Joss University Teaching Hospital and for the government to pay all salaries owed them in keeping up with provisions of the Medical Residency Training Act. And now to security matters, the humanitarian coordinator in Nigeria, Edward Kalon, has condemned the violent attacks in Mungono and Ngazia local government areas of Bornu State yesterday. In a statement issued on Sunday, Kalon said he's saddened by the killing of many civilians, including a four-year-old girl. At least 37 other civilians were injured and a major humanitarian facility was damaged. Kalon said he's appalled and deeply saddened by the news that many uh, citizens lost their lives in the horrific horrific attacks. He sent his deepest condolences to the families of the victims while wishing all injured a speedy recovery. On June 13, non-state armed men raided Goni Usmanti community in Anganzai local government area before penetrating the town of Mungono, resulting in clashes with the military, which lasted for about two hours. And now to politics, the National Working Committee of the All Progressives Congress has confirmed the disqualification of Governor Gordon Obasaki to contest the party's primaries for the Edo State Governorship polls. Making the announcement in Abuja, APC National Chairman Adam Soshomale said Obasaki had presented 40 certificates for the polls and that he abused his power as Governor of Edo State. The APC National Chairman said the party has cleared three persons that will participate in the Edo State primaries including Pius Odubu, Osaro Obaze, and Osagi Izeyamu. The two reports, the ground for disqualification and the grounds for qualification. And we are satisfied that the appeal committee did the thorough job and their job has actually enriched or further reinforced the findings and which means that as recommended by the two committees Governor Godwin Nogegase Obaseki is disqualified again for reasons that were, state, that were well stated in both the appeal committee report and the additional information supplied by the appeal committee. In Edo State, contrary to the provisions of our constitution, the governor had managed the state and disenabled the legislative wing of the State House of Assembly. We accept in total that this is the height of abuse of power. Our democracy is founded on a tripod of executive, legislature, and the judiciary. When a governor decides to muscle the legislature, that democracy is dead. Meanwhile, the Oshomaledad faction of the All Progressives Congress on Sunday recommended to the National Working Committee of the APC to expel Governor Gordon Obasaki and two other chieftains for anti-party activities. 
Reacting to this, Governor Obaseki, who visited Governors Iyesom Wike of Rivers and Udom Imano, said he will disclose his next step after meeting President Buhari. The Federal Capital Territory Administration has closed down the popular Jabi Lake Mall for two weeks, and that's for violating the presidential ban on public gatherings. This followed a musical show by popular musician Aziz Fashala, also known as Naira Mali, at the mall on Friday in violation of the social restrictions imposed by the government to curb the spread of COVID-19 in the country. A court order signed by Magistrate Idaya Takani dated June 14th ordered the sealing of the mall for two weeks for violating the dust to don't curfew in the state. Three defendants, Lukas Omotosho, Franklin Ogene and Maya Eka, were also arraigned before the mobile court. The case was adjourned till June 25th for hearing. Nigeria needs an estimated 2 million units of blood annually, according to the Minister of Health, Osage Ehaniri. Ehaniri revealed this in a statement released on Sunday to mark the World Blood Donor Day 2020. The minister added that a total of 19,676 units of blood were issued to various hospitals across the country for transfusion purposes last year. He also revealed that his ministry was currently considering proposals for a major investment from public and private sectors to upgrade the capacity of the National Blood Transfusion Service to enable it to achieve its potential to produce blood components uh, that meets international best standards. We'll take a break now to return and bring you updates on COVID-19. Give him his shoe, he's somewhere here. His phone and uh, everything. Don't do like that to Thank you. So, <laughs> bye bye. Hey, where do you okay. think? Where do you think you are going? Who? Oh. You never shake body. Eh? You never shake body. Shake wait, body, wait, see? Wait. Eh? You never shake body. Eh? Eh? I don't get combo for my body. You go take for here. Sit down, down. Man. What's this man still doing here? They say I do shake body. Uh, I shake body, I shake body. They say I do this. Yeah, and I say I don't get color. You are asking for money. Sorry, Sorry ma'am. Asking for money to bail a suspect is an act of corruption. Both of you will be punished. Corruption is not allowed within the force. Remember, police is your friend. Giving and taking bribe is wrong. Corruption, not in my country. Stop corruption now. Corruption not in my country. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has announced 403 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the country. The new 403 cases takes the total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Nigeria to 16,085. 16, the NCDC also announced the discharge of 119 patients from isolation centers across the country with 13 new deaths reported. No new state has reported a case in the last 24 hours. To date, 16,085 cases has been confirmed, 5,220 cases has been discharged, and 420 deaths have been recorded in 35 states and the Federal Capital Territory. The 403 new cases are reported from 20 states, including Gumbi with 73, Lagos with 68, Kano with 46, and Edo with 36. Medical experts and president of the National Association of Resident Doctors of Nigeria, Aliyu Sokomba, has allayed fears over the rising number of COVID-19 infections in the country. In an interview with TV360 Nigeria, Sokomba attributed the increasing cases to improving testing capacity. He also added that as more people get tested, more cases will be detected, but assured Nigerians that it's not a cause for concern. The fact that we are recording more cases now does not mean that we are having more infection. What we are having is, we are um, observing is as a result of increased testing. 
as you know, most people with COVID-19 are people who have the disease but are not manifesting symptoms. They are called asymptomatic cases. Mm. And so because more tests are being done right now, they are being detected. That does not translate to more infection taking place until we are able to test a significant number of Nigerians that will be able to identify those people and isolate them and treat them. The cases will continue to rise. I mean, will continue to be detected until we get to the peak before the case will start declining. So what we are having now is we are detecting people who got infected previously. Before now, we are not unable to detect them. Right now, we are detecting them and they are being identified and treatment is being instituted. So it may appear that we are not doing good, but it is just that we are recording what has happened in the past. And so it does not translate to uh, what is currently happening now that the lockdown is being eased. So the lockdown easing, I think it's uh, is, is a step in the right direction. After all, we have had the period of the lockdown during which people have been identified. And uh, th that has gone a long way in curtailing the spread of the disease. We'll take a break here and we'll be right back to stay with us. Oil prices fell on Monday as new COVID-19 infections hit China, Japan and the U.S., adding to concerns that a resurgence of the virus could weigh on the recovery of fuel demand. Brent crude was down 93 cents at $37.80 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude was down $1.33 uh, a barrel. And uh, an OPEC-led monitoring panel will meet on Thursday to discuss ongoing record production cuts and see whether countries have delivered their share of the reductions. Iraq, one of the laggards in complying with the curbs, agreed with its major oil companies to cut crude production further in June. Iraqi officials working at the country's giant southern oil fields told Reuters on Sunday. One person has died with at least 18 others injured in an earthquake of 5.7 magnitude that struck the eastern Turkish province of Bengal on Sunday. Authorities said the earthquake, which shook the eastern Kaviola district, also caused the collapse of a military observation tower. According to the Turkish vice president, the quake produced 46 aftershocks of tower magnitude. Turkey is prone to earthquakes and over 40 people died in January after a 6.8 magnitude quake struck Elazig in the country's east. And that's all the updates we're bringing to you at this hour on the newsroom. Do join us again for more stories. Bye for now.